Hey, I'm James from Cooking at Barbecue, and today we are going to attempt to cook a full Packer brisket in the Kamado Joe Jr. Now, I get asked this question all the time. What if I have a smaller Kamado and I want to cook something like a full Packer brisket? And as you can see, I have my reasons to be skeptical, but through direct messages and emails, some of you have let me know that you've actually been able to pull it off. So I want to find out for myself, can the Kamado Joe Jr. or any small grill like the Joe Jr. cook a full Packer brisket? Let's find out. Okay, let's get started setting up our Joe Jr. I've already cleaned out the basket. I have uh, a removable kick-ash basket that makes it really easy. This is great for going camping or things like that as you're able to quickly remove your heat source and get your grill to be able to cool down to take it in the car. Let's add a couple smoking wood chunks. Uh, I've mentioned these before. These are ones that I got from a birthday a few years ago and I bought them again on Amazon. They're bourbon infused uh, wood chunks and they work great not only because of their size, but awesome flavor. So I'm gonna bury a few of these down in our charcoal. Add in a couple wood chips, add some fogo black, grab our grow blazer grow gun and start a fire in the center. Place another chunk or two here just as we're coming up to temperature. As we are going to have our vents open all the way, this will help make sure that we're not getting creosote. Those are going to burn cleanly. Okay, for setup, I'm going with a double in direct on the Joe Jr., which has the soapstone just being able to barely sit on this upper tier which is giving us a bit more height from our charcoal, so we're getting good airflow around. Then we can install our stock Joe Jr. heat deflector. And again, this will want to slip down, so you do have to set it in place, but once it's there, it's good for the whole cook. And then our cooking grid, which has just a little bit of clearance above that stone. Let's let this come up to temperature. So let's get our brisket out, see what we're working with. I weighed this just before. I actually don't need to weigh it, it's on the package. This is just over 13 pounds. So ironically, I just did a video where I compared an untrimmed brisket to a trim brisket. And I actually liked a lot of the untrimmed brisket better, but I think today we're gonna have to break some of those rules just based on dimensions alone. But nonetheless, let's get this out. Game plan will be to leave the flat uh, almost as is based off of that experiment. But I think we're gonna have to do a little bit of trimming up here of our Mohawk, some of the deck well and the point end to get this to actually fit and fold in the Junior. Let's get it out, pat it dry. So one of the areas that did make a difference is this bottom deck well, is I still was able to feel a little bit of a firm fat patch when I did the head to head comparison. So I am going to trim that down a little bit using a Dow Strong filleting knife here. Put this in my tallow pile, still just pure fat. Mostly, again, because of size, I am going to just remove some of this oxidized gray bit off the side, not too much, just about a quarter of an inch to get a nice clean edge for seasoning. And this can go in my burger grind pile. So coming up to the top, we're gonna have to work on a little bit at the end of our point here, because I think that's just too long. And where I don't have extra space to be able to manage this, I do think these thinner pieces here of the Mohawk into our point are going to burn. So this is all for me today gonna to go in my burger grind pile. So I'm gonna leave the fat cap alone on the flat. The point end up here, I'm gonna take just a little bit more as this is where, again, in that experiment, I did notice I had just a little bit too much is right in this area right here. We have lots of that sort of hard deco fat that's softening up quickly in the heat. That is a good point, by the way, is uh, always trim cold. If not, you throw it in the freezer for a little bit, it'll make it much easier than the fat starting to melt outdoors like it is today. Thankfully, I've got a sharp knife that's helping mask some of that. Okay, our brisket has the shape that I want now, or at least the best chance of being able to fold and work inside the Junior. After we get our rub on, I'll get a scale and measure what our 13 pound to start with is down in terms of what's actually going in our smoker. So let's start with, I have a little bit of leftover Franklin's salt and pepper along with Franklin's rub. So we'll go with that for our seasoning today, just to use that up. Let's get some on the bottom first. The uh, Franklin's barbecue rub is largely Lowry's. I've ran out of Lowry's, but uh, that's why I'm using that is I know this has a flavor profile similar to what the family likes. Flip over and finish our presentation side last. Looks good, let's get our scale. So let's see where we are. I'm gonna zero out our plate here. Grab our brisket. Try and get all the weight on the plate so I'm getting an accurate reading. 9.72 pounds. So we've gone from 13 pounds down to nine pounds. So we ended up taking just about uh, three and a half uh, total pounds or a little bit less than three and a half pounds off in our trim. Let's see what we get when we're done cooking. Typically it will shrink up under heat, but honestly, if this works, I'll be impressed to get uh, sort of nine and a half nearly pounds of a brisket on the Junior. 
Okay, now for the fun part. We're reading just about 270 degrees now on the dome. I've adjusted our vents down to a little bit less than one finger on the bottom. I've also got a couple brisket positioning tools, aka wood chunks, which I think I may need to use to try and drape our brisket over, but we will see. Let's grab it. Let's do a test fit, see if I can actually close the dome. And to my surprise, we're able to close the dome. That's crazy. I've gone this way because the temperature probe right here is going to want to make contact with the front of the brisket. So I've tried to create uh, an opening for the temperature probe, which is why I've oriented this way. Let's grab a meter probe, insert that in past the line. Let's close that up. So now that we have our brisket on, let me fill you in on the game plan. You might be saying, James, I thought we were cooking brisket today, not a horseshoe shape like what it looks like right now. Don't worry, we are gonna fix this. So borrowing a page from world famous uh, pit master, Harry Sue, he often in his videos shares, it makes no difference. If you get the full smoke on a brisket, take it to the bark is set somewhere around 165 degrees. Finishing in the oven, we just need heat. It may not be glamorous, but this is going to solve our problem of having a horseshoe shaped brisket. We don't wanna be slicing it like a turkey going around the arc. We wanna be able to have a nice presentation, a proper brisket, and our guests will have no idea uh, of some of the accommodations that we've had to make for a small grill like the Kamado Joe Jr. This is also gonna help solve a second uh, issue that we run into, which is evenness of the cook and getting a nice tender result all the way through. And lately I've been having a blast with the long, hot hold rest method in our oven and so that's exactly what we're going to be able to do today if you haven't seen the analogy i'll, I'll play a clip from before where i was setting up trying to do coin toss the long hot hold just helps us not be on a nice edge of the perfect tenderness the knowing when to pull the brisket is the most difficult part of brisket uh cooking in general and it gets the least amount of attention everybody's focused on the smoker the trim the tallow the injection the rub but the actual most important thing that makes the biggest difference on a good brisket or a bad brisket is knowing when to pull it. And pulling it at the right point is an art and a science. And I use the analogy of trying to toss coins across the table into a small cup versus the long hot hold makes this cup the size of a big bowl where our accuracy can be much better. It's far more consistent and repeatable. And that's what we're going to go with today. Uh, also, as we are not in a rush, a little bit more on the double indirect setup. So the double indirect setup, particularly in the Joe Jr. where our heat deflector and our food is sitting closest to the fire out of any of the grills that I own. This is just giving us an extra little bit of air gap to help reduce the risk of burning the bottom. And it, from experience, it burns more charcoal, allows us to burn a cleaner, hotter fire and get a better smoke result on our grill, which is exactly why I've done it. And I've tested this before many times in the Joe Jr. And other than a little bit of difficulty getting the soapstone to stay in place at first, it works an absolute charm. And you'd be blown away that one of Kamado Joe's oldest grills, no airlift hinge, no mesh gasket, no slow roller, no divide and conquer rack, can turn out food that you'd be hard pressed, uh, maybe not even be able to tell the difference from some of his bigger, uh, more expensive siblings. So that's the game plan. I'll rejoin you a little bit later on in the day. Uh, I'm gonna let this go for at least the first two hours. We're gonna start spritzing it with a mix of apple cider vinegar and water and work our way towards where the bark is fully set. Usually around 165 degrees, but we're gonna do the fingernail test and make sure that if we scratch it, the bark doesn't come off. That lets me know that the bark is set and we can move in to our second phase of the cook. See you then. Okay, I love it when a plan comes together. We are at the seven hour mark and we are just at the 165 degree Fahrenheit temperature that I wanna move into the second stage of our seven, seven, 14 cooks. So we've got our seven hours of smoke. Now we're gonna do seven hours of a gentle heat, 200 to 225 degrees in the oven. And hopefully that'll bring us to about 185 degrees internal temperature in our brisket. And then we're gonna bump the temperature all the way down to 150 degrees Fahrenheit and hold that for 14 hours. So our brisket will be ready for lunchtime tomorrow. Let's come nice and close. I'll show you how we're gonna wrap it. I'm gonna throw a little bit of tallow into my foil packet. I have this left over. I bought it. If you didn't see that video, I did an experiment of the Wagyu beef tallow versus homemade beef tallow. And I found absolutely no difference. But since I stocked up to make that video, I'm gonna use what I have left and put that in the bottom of our foil pouch, wrap it nice and tight and transfer it to our oven. Add some tallow to the bottom. Uh, we're gonna have to work to flatten our brisket out after it's got a bit of a curve to it, but that will happen on the long, slow portion of our cook. Let's take a look at our brisket. You can already see how much this has shrunk up. So I'll just get rid of this piece of foil I put around the end just to help stop the very end from burning. Remove our meter probe and let's transfer 
our brisket over to the foil. Okay, so I'm gonna work to flatten this out a little bit. It will continue to flatten out during the long sort of gentle heat. I don't wanna push it too much because that will break the bark and expose areas where we don't have seasoning, but giving that a little bit of a push. And now we're ready to wrap it up. Add our meter probe back in, and we go. So a little later, how about 27 hours later? That noise just continued to get even more crazy as the day went on. So I was looking for a window where I could come back and update you and it never came. So let me fill you in on everything that you missed. We stuck with our game plan of seven hours on the grill, seven hours in the oven, and that includes starting to watch uh, our internal temperature, somewhere between 185, 190 degrees. Once we hit that point, that's when I want to start to pull the brisket out and let it rest. So that seven hours can be inclusive of if we hit that temperature, letting it rest down to 150 degrees. And then our last stage, so seven, seven, and 14, is the long, hot, heated rest, which uh, was just a little bit shy of 14 hours. It was 13 hours, which I think, just given the size of this brisket being a little bit smaller than what I would normally cook, uh, accounts for the extra hour of difference. But as you can see, hey, I'm amazed the meter ran 27 hours. I'm still getting data. Let me show you the chart here. And uh, I made a couple adjustments to our oven holding temperature just to make sure I never dropped below 145 degrees Fahrenheit internal temperature, which is exactly where we are at now. So time for the moment of truth to see how our Joe Jr. brisket turned out. Let's get nice and close, slice into it, see how we did. All right, moment of truth. Pull our probe out, we don't need that anymore. Let's get our little bundle of joy out of the foil pouch. Well, it certainly looks like a brisket. We've got great jiggle. Fat cap feels nice, soft and squishy. Slice it open, see how we did. Start with our point end. Some good smoke ring color. Looks like we've rendered that fat nicely all the way through. I don't want to squish that and squeeze it all out, but that's actually looking really good. Let's get a couple slices off of our flat. A little tight on the bottom there. Yep, definitely tight on. It's really just on this right side here where I'm getting a little bit of tearing. So that might be an area where I didn't have enough foil and it is causing our brisket to shred. So once we get in a little bit further, it's just barely hanging on, slightest tug, incredibly tender. Again, a little disappointed we didn't get that, but I didn't end up doing a foil boat on the bottom, which perhaps on the junior being so much closer to the heat we should have. Set some of this aside for our taste test. No such issues on our point end. Really nice smoke ring on the junior, normally struggles a little bit more with smoke but i think adding the supplemental wood chips into the bottom uh, ashtray it's not quite as easy to shove them in there as it is on the bigger uh, joes where they have that uh, ash removal tray but i definitely think that this has worked and again incredibly tender that's more like the consistency that we want where it can hold up under its own weight without pulling but just the slightest pull and that is coming apart can't wait to try this. All right, let's dig in with our flat, starting there. Get a piece. Cheers. This is incredibly juicy still. Tender. I'm loving the extra fat cap. I'm glad that we left this on there because that fat is flavor. And my comparison here, a weekend ago, I did uh, two briskets, one trimmed and non-trimmed, and I did them on my offset smoker. So my most recent comparison is comparing seven hours of smoke on my offset, and we are definitely a stone's throw away on our junior from that. But if I hadn't just had that and you served this to me, this is a really good brisket, especially if you consider the size of the smoker that we had to work with. There is nothing wrong with this. I just wouldn't, again, go bragging to my friends it's offset quality. I actually think we have a way we can improve this in a little bit. One second. Mm. That's really good. Point is fantastic. I was getting so close. You'd almost have to be blindfolded and perhaps not even be able to tell much difference. So much flavor on that fat cap. That is really, really good. I'm gonna do another piece. So just like on our flat end, 
the issue here is lack of smoke. Now, if I was to compare this, this is still better than the briskets that I tried on the Kamado Joe Pellet Joe, which I said came out tasting a little bit like grandma's uh, pot roast. They just didn't have any smoke flavor. Even, you know, pellet grills that are marketing it with more smoke flavor out of the pellet box like I recently did with the Camp Chef Woodwind Pro and tested it. It's better than other pellet grills. I still think our Joe Jr. here has put out a little bit more of a clean smoke taste that I am getting all the way through. It's just not keeping up with my double indirect setup with supplemental wood on my Big Joe 3, let alone uh, what I'm able to do on my offset. But this is only tasting it as is right off the board. I think we have a way that we could serve this in a brisket sandwich and nobody would be none the wiser. Let's prep that up. Get some onion, good old slice or two of brisket, a little bit of barbecue sauce. Now let's try that. Cheers. Wow. As a sandwich, my ability to tell a 10 out of 10 brisket apart from a seven out of 10 brisket, completely neutralized. We're adding in bread, onions, a little bit of sauce. All my tongue appreciates is that's a brisket sandwich and a mighty fine one at that. So I guess that answers the question. Can you cook a full packer brisket in the Joe Jr.? Absolutely. Based off of what I learned, the only thing that I would do differently is move to the foil boat a little bit earlier and or rotate the edge that's on the bottom. I didn't do that. And the one side that was left all the way around the back where some of that heat is just escaping our two deflectors and coming up into the top of our dome gave me a little bit of an overdone edge on the far outside, uh, even though it was only a couple slices that were impacted by that. Otherwise, there is very little to nitpick at this brisket. And I am nitpicking here, just holding it to a high standard to see how it compares to everything else. But this is mighty fine. Well, color me impressed. If you have a Joe Jr. or any small Kamado, you can cook a brisket. Uh, I would have lost a bet if we did that at the beginning of this video. If you've got any other questions or crazy ideas like this, be sure to check out the member section down below. I go live once a month with members and we can ask and answer your questions in a little bit more of an intimate setting than these pre-recorded videos. That's it for today. I'm James with Token Barbecue signing off. And remember, don't be afraid to fire it up. Seriously good. Thank you.